Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to this talk, Implementing SLOs for a New Service. We'll be defining what SLOs are, but uh, out of curiosity, how many of you have used SLOs before, or at least have an idea what they are? Wow, say high number. Um, after all, we are at SRECon. So um, as the title of this talk suggests, it is a case study about our experience defining and measuring SLOs for this service, which we launched at our company uh, last year. Doing this wasn't a very straightforward process, so we felt that sharing our experience could be beneficial to some. I'll first start by introducing myself. I'm a senior site reliability engineer at Squarespace, and my name is Arnold Lawson. In case you're wondering what uh, Squarespace does, Squarespace provides a software as a service solution for building and hosting websites. My team's focus at Squarespace is to build pieces of our storage infrastructure and ensure the reliability. In this talk, I'll be covering a few things. I'll define what this service is and how we use it. I'll talk about why SLOs are important for this service. I'll also discuss our approach in defining and measuring SLOs for this service and the trade-offs we made. Um, lastly, I'll cover the benefits gained throughout the implementation of SLOs for this service and the lessons learned. So our service is an object storage service, just like Google Cloud Storage or Amazon S3, if you've ever used those before. The only difference is that our object storage service is backed by Ceph. Ceph is an open source distributed storage system which stores data as objects. And Ceph provides a RESTful object storage interface which is compatible with the Amazon S3 API. In fact, all our object storage users connect to our service via the use of uh, S3 client programs. It is also worth noting that for high availability purposes, this service is geo-distributed and available in all our data centers. The applications that use this service range from internal web apps to production data processing pipelines and performance monitoring systems. A number of our production data stores also push their backup artifacts to this system. So why did we care about implementing SLOs for our service? Let's first define what SLOs are. SLOs are service level objectives that set performance and reliability targets for a service as seen by its users over a period of time. This means when a well-chosen SLO target is not met by a service, users typically become frustrated with the service. And the performance metrics collected to inform these reliability targets are service level indicators. For example, a Web API availability SLO can be that 99.9% .9 of all API requests will not fail over a period of n weeks. The corresponding availability SLIR metric for this SLO would be the percentage of all API requests that do not fail. In other words, the success rate of all API requests. It is important to note that SLIs are the metrics that drive SLOs, the reliability targets. So the reason why SLOs were important for our object storage service is that a bit after we launched our service, a number of production systems and internal apps began using it. At that point, it became important for us to know how reliable our service was for our users. So we decided to define measurable, optimal performance and reliability targets for our service and meet them. Measuring and meeting these SLOs was a way for us to guarantee our users' happiness, just like the happy dog in the picture. And this also allowed us to better prioritize our work around the life of this service in production. So here's the process we followed for defining and measuring SLOs 
for our service. Number one, we determine what type of SLIs would best capture our user's experience. Two, we define the actual SLIs or the things to measure. Three, we chose an optimal way of measuring these SLIs. Four, we collected these SLIs for a few weeks to get a performance baseline for our service and estimated our initial SLOs. Five, based on these initial SLOs, we inferred some error budgets. Lastly, we published these SLOs, essentially making these SLO values available to our users for them to be aware of the reliability guarantees that our service offers. So for step one, we wanted to determine the SLI or metric types that best capture our user's experience. For this, we did two things. A, understand how users most often interact with the service. This was straightforward as we just looked at our object storage server logs to determine the most common actions performed by, by our users. These included things like create and delete bucket, upload, download, and delete object. B, we needed to understand the major components that make up our service so as to choose the performance metric types that best reflect our user's experience. Our object storage service is made of two main components, a request-driven RESTful interface for accessing objects, essentially an HTTP server, and a distributed storage backend for storing objects. For an HTTP server, which is request-driven, availability and latency SLIs are generally good metrics for capturing the user experience for this type of service. And for storage systems, a durability SLI is important as it measures the proportion of objects written to the storage system that can be successfully reread even after a failure. So now that we knew the types of SLIs we needed, we went ahead and defined some actual SLIs that take into account actions that matter most to our users. So we came up with the following SLIs. For the request-driven HTTP server component, an availability SLI which captures the percentage of HTTP requests that do not fail. Again, while taking into account actions that matter most to our users, such as create and delete bucket, upload, download, and delete object. Also, a latency SLI which captures the percentage of HTTP requests that successfully complete in less than X milliseconds, again, across the same types of requests. And for our storage backend component, we define a durability SLI which captures the percentage of objects written to the object storage service that can be successfully reread without corruption, even after a failure. Step three was to choose the best way to measure these SLIs, a way that captures the actual user experience. For this, we considered three things, or three options. The first one being to collect SLIs from our service load balancer logs. This was probably the best or the easiest option. However, we realized that for any request that fails to reach our load balancers, for example, due to networking issues, we wouldn't be able to collect metrics on that. So this option wouldn't give us a real world picture of how our service is performing um, from the perspective of our users. So we looked into a second option, which was to instrument our client, our object storage client programs. This would have been the most optimal option as it would allow us to collect metrics directly from our actual users, therefore getting a real world picture of how our service is performing. Unfortunately, this would have been too costly in engineering efforts as it meant instrumenting and maintaining S3 clients across multiple languages so as to support our user base. We ended up deploying probers which perform common user actions. This was the best option for us as it mimics the actual user experience well enough and allows us to catch errors when requests cannot reach our service. For collecting data durability measurements, 
our probers do two things. They execute code that validates that sampled written objects can be successfully reread from any of our sites and have not experienced any corruption. These probers also collect measurements on the status of site-to-site -site object replication process, which ensures that objects will not be lost in the event of a data center failure. Step four consisted of collecting SLIs for a few weeks to get a performance baseline for our service and then setting our initial SLOs. This is where we wrote the code for the probers and deployed this code as part of the probers to begin collecting SLIs. To the right is some sample code for performing a create bucket action. Notice that we use an SLI collector library to ship SLIs to our managed metrics collection service. We record success and latency metrics for the action, this one being create bucket, and also push the same metrics to the overall collection of all HTTP requests. This allows us to track success and latency metrics per request type and across all HTTP requests made by probers. We apply the same SLI collection logic for all other types of HTTP requests that we care about. And with these metrics, we are able to generate some graphs. Here's an example that shows our latency SLI measured over a period of four weeks for all HTTP requests issued by probers. Notice we measure both the P90 and P99 latencies in order to capture the typical user experience as well as the experience of the subset of requests that take a long time to complete. Given that we capture latency metrics per request type, we are able to drill down and see which request types may be taking a long time to complete, therefore affecting our overall latency SLO. After collecting availability, latency, and durability SLIs for about four weeks, we were able to uh, get a performance baseline for our service and estimated our initial SLOs. These are the targets we are supposed to meet in order to keep our users happy. For our availability SLO, we guarantee that 99.9% .9 of all requests will complete successfully over a period of four weeks. For our latency SLOs, we account for both the P90 and P99 latency metrics. For the P90, for instance, we guarantee that 90% of all requests will complete successfully within 300 milliseconds over a period of four weeks. We also have a durability SLO that guarantees eight nines worth of objects written to our object storage service will not be lost or compromised in the event of a failure over a period of one year. Setting our initial durability SLO was tricky. We actually used a self-specific data durability calculator, which takes into account the data loss prevention features we've put in place for our service and computes the probability that objects are not lost or corrupt in the event of a failure. These data loss prevention features included things like the number of data centers where the service is available, the object replication latency, uh, the object replication factor, the site-to-site -site replication latency, and the frequency of data integrity check jobs. From these initial SLOs, we were able to infer some error budgets. An error budget is the amount of headroom there is above an SLO. In other words, the degree to which we can afford to not be within SLO and not frustrate users significantly. For example, our error budgets were that with three nines availability over four weeks, 0.1% of requests could fail over the same period. In other words, our service can be unreliable for up to about 43 minutes per month without frustrating users, which I think is pretty good, um, at least for us engineers. And we apply the same concept for the rest of our SLOs, where eight nines durability of objects 
per year means a loss of 0.00001% of objects is allowed per year. Our last step, and probably the easiest one, was to publish these SLOs. This is where we produce documentation that outlined the following about our service, what it does and how it is used, the types of SLIs being measured, a definition of the actual SLIs, a definition of the SLOs that are being informed by the SLIs, plus a rationale for why these SLOs and SLIs were chosen. We've made this documentation available to our users and other engineering groups as a reference regarding the reliability guarantees of the service. And we review this documentation quarterly for any necessary SLO adjustments to ensure that these values are in line with reality. In conclusion, we gain some benefits from implementing SLOs for this service. For example, SLIs inform our decisions when it comes to prioritizing reliability projects or doing capacity planning. During incidents, SLI graphs also come in handy. With those, we can identify what parts of our service are degraded and to what extent. Based on our SLO values, users can easily determine if our service is appropriate for a particular use case. Our alerting has also improved as we now use SLIs for monitoring and don't have to page engineers when we are operating within SLOs. For example, a couple of disk failures within our um, storage clusters wouldn't, shouldn't impact our SLOs. So we never page engineers for such events. We only get soft notifications about those. On the other hand, if our latency measurements became pretty bad, therefore affecting our SLOs, someone will be paged for that. We also learned some lessons. The first one being that choosing a metrics collection service with a powerful query language can make your life easier, especially when it comes to translating SLI definitions into actual metrics queries. Also, implementing a data durability SLO for a storage system can be tricky. A data durability SLO defines the probability that data is not permanently lost or corrupt in the event of a failure of the storage system. This means to set a good durability SLO target, one should become familiar with the data loss prevention features of the storage system and enable them correctly, potentially even implement additional ones if a better initial durability target is needed. Also understand how the storage system deals with data integrity, because serving corrupt data to users will certainly make them unhappy. And to finish, here are some tips for defining and measuring SLOs. Never strive for 100% reliability. It is not achievable, especially in a world of distributed systems. Understand the components of the system for which you are implementing SLOs. Know how users interact with the system and what features they use most. Collect SLIs that measure the aspects of the system that matter most to users. For storage systems, this means to also collect metrics on data durability and integrity. Finally, use SLO results to prioritize reliability engineering projects. And merci. This is my French to thank my team and everybody that helped uh, on this project. Also, if you'd like to chat more about the content of this um, talk, I'll be around, so please come find me. And thank you for listening. <laughs>